Now back here on First Things First with David Deal on this Christmas morning. We're moving into the L.A. Rams. They beat the Tennessee Titans yesterday to improve to an 11-4 record this year. That clinched their first NFC West title since 2003. Head coach Sean McVay spoke about his team's surprising season after the game. Yeah, you know, you're just so happy for these players and these coaches just to be able to share that feeling with these guys that we've accomplished one of our goals when you start the season. And uh, doing this gives ourselves a chance to, to compete and get into the playoffs. And, and now we're ensured a home playoff game as well. So I think, you know, you just look at some of the guys, the way that they've continued to work, uh, guys that have fought through some adversity, and then our coaching staff putting the players in good positions uh, to have success on the field. So I'm just so happy for those guys and, and just happy to be a part of it. All right, Dave. So some context here, David. Last season, this Rams team was 4-12. and 12. Yeah. This season, almost the inverse of that number. What has been most impressive to you about this turnaround? I think just the vibe and the confidence of this football team. I mean, they've had pieces in part. You think about the way that Jeff Fisher talked. Partial of what he said was false. Partial was true. A lot of these guys that they drafted, other teams didn't believe in. Todd Gurley, they went out. Picked him when he had the knee injury. People are like, oh, how can you pick a running back with that knee injury? So as much as you want to discredit him, you have to give him a Did little bit of credit. Did you play Fisher at some point? Never. <laughs> but you have to give him oh, credit. Man. One thing he's always had is <laughs> talent. He's never won football games. So it's a big difference. Maybe he could be an executive. But when you, think of, when you think about this football team, when you think about the Los Angeles Rams, number one, offensively, to turn around 17 points per game increase compared to last year. Yes. That's the most in Super Bowl era history. Amazing. And you think about the way that McVay has been able to tailor game plans exactly for Jared Goff. You look at the way offensively they run 11 personnel, which is very difficult for defenses to keep up with, with Todd Gurley in the backfield. Why? If you keep a linebacker in there, they're going to bludgeon you to death because they're going to throw it to him out of the backfield. Right. You go to nickel, you bring in a nickel player. What are they going to do? They're going to condense the four formation and run the football with Gurley and run play action off of it. Defensively, Aaron Donald and this defense is playing fast. They're swarming to the football. They're creating takeaways. And Wade Phillips should be up for one of the defensive coaches or coaches of the year based upon the way that he's been able to change the 3-4 system and getting everybody to buy in. And the one thing I will say, with the, the one highlight I would have loved to have, I'm a big Ric Flair fan. Sean McVay wooing after the game in the locker room with the team. That's just a sign of a coach that has been able to get in with a younger generation of a team and being able to, number one, relate with them, but at the same time still showing that he's in charge. And the minute that he talks, you see everybody know that he's directly in command of everything that's taking place. This is what I was talking about in the Jason Garrett conversation. There are some of these elite coaches who can turn things around. You know every NFL team has some talent. Oh, yeah. If you get the elite coach in there who knows how to utilize that talent, sky's the limit. I mean, Jared Goff, people thought he was a bust. Straight up bust. Todd Gurley, sophomore slump. People were wondering how good he was. Now, I know they got, you know, they brought in Andrew Whitworth and John Sullivan on the offensive line. They got the three new receivers. What I like about their system, though, and this separates them from most of the playoff teams, I would say, they spread the wealth. You know, Cooper oh, Cup, yeah. Sammy, Sammy Watkins, Watkins. Oh, yeah. uh, the, the, what's the other kid, uh, Robert Woods. Yeah, Robert Woods. Yeah, Bills, yeah. yeah, I mean, and then Gurley gets his share of catches. You know, so I, I think they're versatile. I actually give them a really good shot of coming out of the oh, Doug, 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 let me ask you this yeah. question. pointed question. Is this, all that these two are saying, is this to credit Sean McVay's success or is this an indictment? Of Fisher's failure. Both. Yeah. First of all, I mean, I, I agree with both. like Jeff Fisher can. You think it's seven and nine when you think of Jeff right. Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, think, that's think that's Jeff, that's Jeff, Fisher, that's Jeff Fisher thinks that this year's team reflects well on him. Seven people agree with him. Nine people disagree. <laughs> right? That's yeah. what it feels like. But look, look around the playoffs, by the way. Case Keenum starting and looking pretty good from the yeah. Vikings. Nick Foles. We'll see how he looks with the with the Eagles. This and and Jared yeah, Goff. Good, all of them look like they couldn't play. Yeah. Remember, Nick Foles was good with the Eagles. He goes to the Rams, can't play. Case Keenum looks like he can play. Did with Houston, can with Minnesota. So this is an indictment of Jeff Fisher or maybe who Jeff Fisher hired offensively. Okay. But remember when Sean McVay got the job, Mike March was yeah. critical yeah. of the hire. Yeah. Like, you oh, need to this, not hire a this buddy. This is the greatest show on Right, heard. you need yeah. to not hire a buddy. Like, and they, hired, they hired a really bright offensive mind who also 
When you take one of these jobs, you have to be smart enough to know what you don't know. So what was the first thing he did? I need to hire a really good defensive coordinator, and I'm inexperienced as a head coach. Let me hire the most experienced, one yeah. of the most respected yeah. defensive coaches. And they went out and got Wade Phillips. A lot of people around the league got him, wanted him. They got him. You yeah. combine the fact that they have an outstanding coaching staff. He understands how to handle himself. His ego is in check. And he puts these guys, these new players, along with the old players, in the right situation, the right call. He's made it, made it less thinking for Jared Goff. I mean, Jared Goff is not going up there and going Tom no, Brady no, no, no. and go, you know, and going through all these progressions. He's doing what McVay... They, here's the brilliance to Sean McVay. If you notice, they get to the line, line of scrimmage quicker than any team in the National Football League. Yeah. Why? Because the headset still works until 15 on the, on, the game, on the play clock. So he can talk his young quarterback yep. Yep. through the reads and through what he's looking for. Coaching. He's yeah. actually oh, not just, yeah. not just coaching, that. but Ebony, he's yeah. coaching what he knows. No, I mean, he ain't coaching defense. Right. He right. lets that to Wade Phillips. Yeah. So it's the combination of everything. Some are coaching. And, and, yeah. and, and it's, it's Steve Kerr when he got to the Warriors, and this is absolutely an indictment on Jeff Fisher. When you look at it, though, when you talk about the Wade Phillips thing, it's great because in between timeouts, in between series, when the offense is going off, Wade Phillips is standing over there calling the defense. You see Sean McVay sitting right next to Jared Goff on the bench going over the next drive in the next series. So being able to sit back and let coaches coach. We all know that some head coaches, they're in control. They want to micromanage. It's great that he has a coach in Wade Phillips that, believe me, preparing for his third down and third and long systems could be one of the toughest things I did in my 11 years. Because you look at third and 11 plus, third and 7 to 10, you know, you have your standard blitzes that they have. You face Wade Phillips' defense, we would have a list of what we would call one-timers. There would be 40 blitzes on there wow. that he ran one time within the last five years that will either win a football game for you or it will destroy a football game for you. And that's the type of preparation you have to have not only for that defense, but you talked about pushing the tempo offensively. When they can run 11 personnel and they can dictate coverages and manipulate it with motion and do it where you cannot substitute defensively, you're the one controlling the game. You're the one controlling the pace of it. You're controlling the time of possession. And what does that allow your offense to do? It allows your offense and your defense to react and not overthink. And we know that split second that you think, like defenses have been up against this Rams offense, it's over for you. You know, here's, here's one last thing uh, on the Rams is in terms of do you believe in them to win the Super Bowl? They didn't play well yesterday. Now, Tennessee is could still be a I mean, borderline playoff team, so they're not playing a terrible football team. But, the, but there's an expression, and we use it in basketball all the time, can you play well when you're not playing well? Yeah, and that's that's what actually what impressed me about the Rams yesterday is they won on the road against a playoff caliber team, and they didn't play their best football. Maybe not even their second yeah. best football. Yeah. They it was enough to win the game. Yeah, they finished the game. Very quick, I want your thoughts on Todd uh, Gurley. Yes, you, I know what these two think. Do you think he's in the conversation for MVP? I think he is the best back in the uh, NFL right now. But when you're talking about being the MVP at running back. You're talking about a completely different set of numbers yeah, that we're looking at. No I'm not diminishing what he's done and where his football team is at and how they've won seven games on the road like they have this season, if you're not including the home game in London that they had. <laughs> but when you look at the way that he's been able to run the football and that it makes them not one-dimensional, that you really have to pick your poison defensively, it has changed their offense. It is a reason why they're sitting where they are right now. But to be the MVP... That's a tough thing yeah. to say. It 87 is. yards a game. It's a, it's, no. a, it's a tall feat. But coming up, should John Rosen have chosen his words maybe a little differently after skipping out on UCLA's bowl game? That's next up on First Things First. Who's your MVP?